Hello everyone and welcome to theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat Summit here in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. We are here for three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, uh, 30 guests, close to 30 guests, and yeah. many, many guests. A lot of guests. Yes, A lot yes. of very <laughs> interesting conversations about all the announcements, what's going on in open source, what's happening obviously in AI and open source, and I think there's some really neat things that will be able to be brought together as we go through, with nice threads that we'll be able to pull throughout the entire three days. You and I are both fresh from the main stage where we heard from Matt Hicks, the CEO, we heard from Ashesh Baldani, Stephanie Shearer, so many of the Red Hat big, big, big time executives. And it does seem to me as though, uh, and of course AI is, is we are in the AI era, um, AI is the running theme, and it seems as though Red Hat is approaching its AI product strategy pretty much the way it's really appro approach, has approached every single product it's ever launched, um, with this, this um, ethos of openness, flexibility, choice, democratization, demystification. Does, I mean, does, do, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that, Rebecca. I think that really when you start to look at what Matt and Ashesh were talking about, and laying the groundwork for this week was that literally from bringing you know, Granite, uh, both the models, the language model, and the code assist with IBM to be open sourced, I mean, is huge. And looking and talking about the fact that you know, we're doing this similar to how Meta is going about things, that openness of AI, I, I think, you know, again, IBM and Red Hat, uh, IBM launched the AI Alliance about six months ago, and it's actually taken up steam. And that AI Alliance around being open and really demystifying and really trying to bring that really fits in well. And I think that again, you start to look at how they bring AI through the entire portfolio, it's been pretty interesting to yeah. see so far today. No doubt, and we've had, we're going to have a lot of guests on who will be talking about the, the major product announcements, but I'm curious to get your take. Two, two big ones on the main stage this morning, Instruct Lab and Rel AI. Let's, what is your take on Instruct Lab? And I know you were also at the analyst briefings for this one. Yeah, no, I, I think Instruct Lab, I've, I've got to spend a little time with it over the last couple weeks here. Kind of got an early uh, hint that this would be going on, and I, I think when you start to look at Instruct Lab, there's a, a number of different organizations that are trying to help people get started with AI faster. And I think Instruct Lab is really key to, from my view, and I'm interested to hear Ashesh's on next and get, dig a little deeper into this, it's how do you get to truth in your models? Your truth, your company's truth, your company's IP in these models. And it seems like Instruct Lab in open sourcing it, again, kind of, and it's in a, a Red Hat supported product, seems to be the way to go. And in fact, they had Dell up on, on stage talking about how they integrated Instruct Lab into their Apex for OpenShift, the cloud platform for OpenShift uh, that they launched about six months ago. So I, I think some super interesting stuff. And the RHEL AI, I think, is a really interesting one that I also want to dig into because it kind of looks like a bridge between how you do use Instruct Lab, RHEL AI, and then move into production. And it kind of looks like that bridge and the image on containers and being able to run it and boot it. I, I, I want to dig into that as well, because I think that's interesting. From my perspective, the, the non-geek perspective, it seems as though they are helping regular people, people like customer service representatives, the accountants, the non-data scientists, learn how to, to train and to fine tune models and put their knowledge and skills into these models and also check them too. I mean, is, I mean am, am I getting this right, Rob? Yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think the use cases that they went on and Chris was on, uh, Chris Morgan was on talking about the use cases and doing the demos with a fantastic panel of demoers. Yes. Uh, I got to say I love that, and Chris, great job, uh, and team. Uh, I, I start to look at it and go, okay, here's how we break it down and make it more simple. And in fact, I'm going to have to go back and watch that a couple times because it went so quickly. But I, I think that the use case is about helping, like you said, taking your data using Instruct Lab, RHEL AI, running it on OpenShift AI to help a customer service agent provide a better customer experience 
to that end user who calls in and has a question. And they can quickly not only find the answer, but they don't get hallucinations. Precisely, and they are also doing it in the style and the spirit that's part of the company too. That it, that's bringing your 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 personalized jargon, the way in which your company approaches problems, and what, any little problem that a customer might be having, to dealing with a customer service representative, way on up to the boardroom. That the, those strategies too. It, exactly, and I, I think that's where it is. And I, it, I liked how it is about being the talk about outcomes and the talk about how people are going to use this. And I think that simplification was on display across all of these different, and I think you know, right now there's another, uh, another one going on around Ansible Fest, which is also co-located, again, for the second year in a row with Red Hat Summit. I, I think it's interesting because you have all the automation, and we're going to get to talk to some fa fantastic people on the Ansible side, and partners around that with things like Run AI and others that was just announced the acquisition by NVIDIA. So I think there's some really interesting things going on under the covers that's really around, again, that thread of simplification of AI. Yeah. And I, I think in an open way. I, yes, two, two, uh, two threads I want to pick up on. The first was partners, and we uh, we go to a lot of these shows. The Cube, we are we, we are basically living in Las Vegas next month at all these different technology shows. But the, the partner ecosystem is such a huge part of, for all of these companies, but especially for Red Hat. I feel that the, there's a real uh, community within Red Hat that, that that they consider themselves Red Hatters, and the, that there is such um, a spirit of collaboration because because it's open source. I mean, it, it's sort of the the way things work. What struck you about the, part, the ecosystem partners that we saw on the main stage? And there were a lot of them. I, um, I think the fact that Red Hat has continued, although you know, IBM is the parent company, Red Hat has really continued to work with everybody from Lenovo, HPE, Dell in a big way, and others like when you start to get into the models, like they're talking about Stability AI and some of the open models with Stability AI that they're integrating into OpenShift AI and things of that nature and throughout the entire, all the way back to Instruct Lab. I think when you start to look at it, the partnerships are key to how they go to market. It's also key how they simplify it for those organizations that they are their customers as well. Right, right. And then the second one, the second thread I wanted to pick up on was openness. Because as we were just talking before the cameras were rolling, the thing about open AI is it's, it's not open. And, and they're really trying to demystify it and create more of an openness, choice, flexibility around AI. Yeah, again, it goes back to, it, it has to be democratized. And we, on, on theCUBE, we've been big fans of open and we think open source in general wins. And I think the fact going down this path with these different pieces that they have all being open and the models being open, I think that also really is key in general because it comes trust. Open can lead to trust, it can lead to better security, it can lead to better governance. And I think that is a way that we get a lot of this around where we have regulations that are going to come down. If you're working in an open manner, it's a lot easier to address those regulations than if you go off in a different direction and you're closed up and you have to then explain something you don't want to explain. Right, right. I mean, we, we heard a little bit about security on the main stage this morning. Were you surprised we weren't hearing about it more as an enduring theme? I think we'll hear more about it as the week goes on, and okay. we have Darren on, I think, tomorrow, right. where we'll go very deep into security and how they not only secure themselves, but how the whole life cycle of AI gets secured. And I think that they there's some other uh, outlets for that, so the CNCF has their security summit coming up pretty soon, and I think they'll, we'll start to hear a lot about that drumbeat of security. I think when you look at the ETR data that we have, you start to look at that 80% of organizations are of at least evaluating one or many different use cases of AI, and I think getting back to where do they really tie in and how, which one is going to go to, make it all the way to production is still, it's not easy. And I think there's a lot of the, you know, picks and 
you know, axes and tools of getting AI up and running that we're still trying to figure out. Exactly. We're having a guest on too who's going to be talking about responsible AI, um, ethical AI, and I think that particularly after this weekend where, where the great Warren Buffett said that AI scares the hell out of him, I mean, this, this is an appropriate person to be talking to. Um, do, do you, again, we did not hear about it much on the main stage, it's just day one, uh, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> I know it's, it's early yet, but do you think we're going, that that is also going to be a, a running theme I, that here at Red Hat? I mean, Red Hat seems to be I mean, they, they really build themselves as one of the good guys and one of the, the people who are really thinking about these things with yeah. thought and consideration. I, I think so, and I, I think that really, when you start to look at the governance of that, that, that's where Ansible fits in and a lot of that governance around how you get to AI and what they're talking about where they announced last year, uh, the governance and building in guardrails using light speed their AI inside of Ansible and then the announcements of Lightspeed for RHEL now to help get up and running faster and how those are trained and I think that openness of how they're approaching it and again, I, I don't know that I expected the Granite announcements about open sourcing that and I think that was really key and one of the keys to seeing that because when you start to look at it, it's one of the underpinnings for a lot of things like Lightspeed and others that are used out there. So right. I, I think that, you know, they kind of you know, walk the walk and talk the talk at the same time around governance and open source and how are you going to control this and I mean, I'm actually very, unlike M Mr. Buffett, I am <laughs> very positive on AI, bullish. and I, I'm very bullish, very bullish. I'm, I, I think, you know, and I think a lot of organizations are, I think they're still trying to capture those use cases, though. Right, 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 but we are starting to even see it a little bit in the numbers, I mean, the productivity Absolutely. numbers and ROI. One of the things that really struck me about what Matt Hicks was talking about on the main stage this morning was, was uh, Tech, the technology industry and academia joining forces. I mean, obviously, tech is very interested in, in research that's, that's taking place at colleges and universities and vice versa, but the pace of research at, at academia is usually a lot slower, but with this combination of open source and AI, we, he said we are, we are going from breakthrough to model in a week, yeah. and it's really a staggering, acceleration of change. And, and one that it's, I mean, obviously Red Hat based in North Carolina, uh, Research Triangle, they've got big offices in Boston, which is, we you know, a lot, a lot of colleges <laughs> and universities there. So I, I'm interested to talk to him about the, the ways in which they're joining forces to, yeah. to come up with new innovations. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of that again goes back to the AI Alliance they launched, which was public-private mm -hmm. uh, consortium, I guess you could say, where you do have like, Boston University is a member of that, and some of the major, I think USC and Cal Berkeley and others are part of that. And when you start to look at where a lot of this is going, and again, you know, being a homer for Boston University where I went, I, you know, I, I sit there and I get all of the their propaganda about what they're doing within AI, and you know, I think part of it is you have the, the students who are there leaning in, the researchers who are in leaning in, but Again, there's a specter of regulation and things of that nature where somebody like an IBM, like a Red Hat, that has that experience working with governments and understands and can get ahead of that, I think is key. And I, and I think that's key. And I, I think you also see it through their partnerships with people like NVIDIA and AMD and Intel and you know, Pat Gelsinger being on via video today. I mean, it was very exciting. You know, I, mean, I know Matt's excited to get his, his card and you know, be able to start playing around with it, and that's true Matt exactly. <laughs> for you. <laughs> exactly, well we've got so many more fantastic guests. We've got uh, people from Boston Children's Hospital on later today, as well as a lot of Red Hat executives, Dell executives, um, and I cannot wait to continue, to continue this Red Hat journey with you, and also Paul Gillen, who's here as an analyst too. It's going to be exciting. It's we got, be you know, Red Hat Summit and Ansible Fest is always one of the most energetic places to be, and I'm glad we can bring some of that energy to people watching. Exactly, a red hot, red hat summit. Yeah. I think that's going to be our code word. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep it. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat Summit coming up next. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage.